We're back to corporate conversation, and the company on our radar right now is MTAR Technology. Now, uh, the company reported the Q3 numbers about a month and a half back, and at that time they said that revenues in FI24 shall be marginally higher compared to FI23 due to a deferment of export shipments in clean energy sector to the next year. And therefore, for FI25, the company is quite confident about growth, and they're guiding for a 45 to 50 percent increase in revenues. The company also went on to state that they are in the final stages of discussions with reputed global MNCs, and they've also made good progress in small satellite launch vehicle project. Parva Srinivas Reddy, MD and promoter of MTAR Technology, is with us on the show now. Uh, Mr. Reddy, you know, morning. This is Reema here. Um, you know, the commentary that I just read out was shared by you about a month and a half back that FI24 will see a slight increase in revenues, FI25 will see a 45 to 50 percent. There are deferments in export shipments. Are you on track in the last one and a half month? What has changed? Uh, are further orders being deferred or have you managed to get, you know, that streamlined? I managed to streamline everything. Uh, if you look at our FI23, uh, we did 322 crores and FI24, we did 575. Uh, one thing is, we, in, in spite of the deferment of shipments, we're able to sustain such similar revenue uh, for this current year, more or less. And then uh, the next year, the growth story remains intact. And uh, as you said, uh, we have signed enough. Uh, uh, you know, we are, we are progressing very well with number of MNCs to uh, work on long-term contracts with them, which should be more or less finalized within the next one, one and a half months or so, a couple of months. So we are we are on track with uh, what we need to do about this, and uh, uh, you continue to grow the way we're supposed to grow moving forward as well. Just to reiterate, Mr. Reddy, for the next year you want to grow by forty-five to fifty percent, right? That's what we're looking at. So we're looking at more closely about our numbers, the commitments by customers, and all that over the next uh, uh, one month or so. Uh, so we're looking at uh, doing, uh, trying to achieve that and also looking at some new projects. So hopefully we should be there uh, somewhere in the guidance of, uh, you know, 850 to 900 crores. But uh, more or less, the lowest, the lowest side of guidance would be around 820, 830 crores is what we're looking at, but the higher side would be about 900 crores. Okay, 830 to 900 crores, and margins will hold around 26%? Yeah, we'll be able to do the margins at 26%, uh, because this year uh, we did everything possible uh, for the growth, uh, what we anticipated, but that didn't happen. But I, I look at it in a positive way because we're able to sustain what we did the previous year in spite of deferment of shipments and all that. So that's something which, uh, you know, we uh, were able to do it. So moving forward, I think uh, we'll try to do that, as I said, 830 to 900 crores range sort of thing. Mr. Reddy, can you uh, give us some more perspective on what will sort of power this growth, this 900 odd crores that you're hoping to do next year? Which are, which of your segments, where are the orders really trickling in and, you know, where are the, the orders <clears throat> fetching you higher margins? No, basically one is the, uh, we're doing, uh, we've done a lot of first articles for a lot of MNCs, as I said, for the aerospace sector. You know, that's something which we are really progressing very well. So those numbers are going to go up much higher. And we are launching uh, some of the, uh, uh, trying to launch some of the new products next year. So these are the areas we're looking at. Clean energy, as far as one of our main customers, uh, we are taking only conservative estimates for the next year as well. So based on that, uh, so that's, we're also trying to achieve a lot of customer diversification over the next one year by doing this. And that's how the growth uh, numbers are coming from. Mm. Uh, these MNC orders that you are in conversation with, uh, what would be the size and when are you likely to close them? See, these MNC orders, we are, see, we are already doing a lot of first articles for them, but the long-term contracts would be finalized within the next couple of months. And you're looking at, you know, uh, some of them would range from 70, uh, 7 million to 10 million a year, so, uh, spreading over the next 10 years. So these are very long-term contracts and can... There's only an upside to this, and there's no downside. So we have, we are working with more than two, three MNCs on this in the first article. So hopefully everything will fall in place within the next one, one and a half months to complete this. Okay, uh, just to talk about the order book. At the end of December, you were just shy of 1,200 crores in terms of total order book size. How are you likely yeah. to end the current year, and then what's the projection uh, going forward? 
See, the one main issue is with the uh, nuclear power cooperation, right? We expected 500 crores of orders from uh, through the Tiger 5 and 6 through private bidding. So that got delayed, and they're expecting those orders in the first quarter right now. But those numbers are not captured anyway in our business plan for next year. So that's the only difference. Otherwise, we're on track with that. So the guidance that you've given us of 850 to 900 crores, that is including these orders that you just spoke of? No, it's got nothing to do with the nuclear orders, what we're going to get from Tiger Finances. Okay, but uh, and but you're expecting uh, those nuclear orders to come in the first quarter of the new year? Yeah, we're expecting that to be finalized in the first quarter. And what's what's typically the size, uh, you know, uh, ballpark, what are we talking about here? We're talking about 500, around 500 crores of orders coming in from those two reactors, which is... Uh, mm. Uh, more or less in the clo closure stage right now. Uh, so we'll be, instead of, instead of getting it before March, probably in the first quarter of next year we'll have it. What about um, the space segment? How much will it contribute in the coming year? This 830 to 900 crores that you're talking about from the lower to the upper end, how much does space contribute? So that that will be around seats. Uh, space is free issue material, as all of you know. So we're doing, we'll be doing around, only for ISRO, we'll be doing around 55 crores uh, around that number. The rest will be the aerospace sector is what we're looking at. Okay. Right now, your uh, uh, mix between domestic and exports is, I think, really skewed in favor of exports, right? Uh, if I have the right numbers, nine months, then exports are 74%. Will this mix continue to be more or less the same? Uh, it should be more or less the same. Uh, but from the so subsequent year, once the nuclear orders kick in, uh, the progressively the numbers on nuclear will go up. But exports will obviously uh, contribute to about 70 to 75% of our business. And what's the difference in your gross margins between export and domestic? And, you know, you are guiding for margins to improve in FI25. What would the gross margin stand at? See, we're looking at around uh, 50, 50 to 52% uh, is what we're aiming at uh, for next year, mm -hmm. uh, the gross margin. So we take it from there. And obviously... Uh, we already have the team in place. Uh, we have the people in place based on the growth, what we anticipated this year. So the next year, we are clearly anticipating, uh, you know, the EBITDA levels of about 26%, plus or minus few basis points here and there. So that's very clear. And we have been very uh, careful in giving our guidance for the next year as well. So as I said, uh, the lower guidance will be around 820, 830 crores, and the higher guidance will be around 900. So it depends on how things go. Okay, finally, Mr. Reddy, just uh, leave us with uh, a margin profile across your businesses. Like you're getting these big nuclear orders worth 500 crores. So typically, are they high value orders compared to, let's say, space? And then, you know, uh, where is clean energy in, in, in the mix and some of the other segments that you're operating in? Yeah, see, nuclear orders, the difference here is that uh, majority of these orders are all high value orders where MTAR does a lot of projects on exclusive basis. So, as I said, these, uh, the, the NPCL has to finalize with the main uh, uh, you know, bidder for this. And once that is done, we have quoted for all the bidders. We are exclusively working with them. So, these are all very huge orders coming in. And also, we're expecting a lot of refurbishment of reactors going to happen over the next one year. So, that will directly come to MTAR as well. So, a lot of things. Uh, so, these orders we have not captured for the next year revenue numbers at all. So it will be there in the order book, but by the time we get the orders and the raw materials in place, uh, so all these numbers will move on to the subsequent financial year. Got it. So you'll get a nuclear-powered thrust as you step into FY25. That is uh, MTR Technologies. Thank you very much for joining in uh, and uh, sharing some of uh, the business uh, sort of contours with us. Remember, guys, this was a stock when... Chandrayaan was being launched. Mm. The stock was launched into higher orbit yeah. as well. It was it pretty much hit its peak in about September, I think it was of 2023. And since then, it's petered down because uh, you know the numbers have not looked as good. But what the management is now telling us that you know stepping into FY25, things could get a lot better on the top line and on the margin front as well. That is, MTAR Technologies. Okay.